from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. On today's episode, we hear from new Tie Cats special teams coordinator Paul Boudreau as he discusses making his way to the hammer. And I also speak with new Tie Cats defensive line coach Glenn Young about his new role with the Cats. It's Wednesday, February 7th, 2024, and you're listening to Tie Cats today. A couple new faces on today's episode, coaches Paul Boudreau and Glenn Young. Before we get to that, we're going to get to some re-signing news for the Tie Cats, and the team announced they've re-signed Hamilton's very own Tyler Chernowski and another Canadian D lineman, Mason Bennett. Obviously, a couple fan favorites. Everyone loves Mason Bennett and Tyler Chernowski. They do a lot in the community, and they do a lot for this football team. So great to see those two back and re-signed, and they will be on tomorrow's episode. So make sure to tune into that to hear from Tyler Chernowski and Mason Bennett. For today's episode, I'm going to throw to my first guest, and that's new special teams coordinator. Paul Boudreaux. My first guest is newly announced Ticat special teams coordinator Paul Boudreaux. Paul, thanks for joining me on today's show and welcome to the Hammer. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Uh, looking forward to new adventure. How did the conversation start for you to come aboard here with the Ticats and, and join uh, Hamilton and, and Scott Milanovic and his crew? Uh, yeah, so it's kind of interesting. I was uh, my dad recruited Jeff Reinbold in college. Okay. And he saw that Reinbold was leaving. So I ended up getting a hold of Legio and I got O's number and I started a little communication and then that went to Scott and and uh Scott O and I had a an interview for a couple hours and you know just went from there. Why did you feel as though Hamilton would be a good fit for you and, and for your yourself and, and a place that you can see yourself for, for several years? Yeah, so I was in Winnipeg for eight years. I'm not somebody that's trying to jump all over the place. And mm-hmm. uh, this is – so we would drive back. I My family's in Boston and my wife's family's in Boston. So we would drive from Winnipeg, where I'm at now, back to Boston. That was a three-day, 2,000-mile drive <laughs> yeah that's a trip and, uh so after i got hired we drove we were in boston and we drove up to hamilton it's a seven hour drive so it's a nice little easy trip for the family to come up and visit us and uh yeah it's close to home and i you know they're only two years re- removed from two year two gray cups right mm-hmm. so um it's it's a successful franchise i think what Scott and O are doing and what O has built throughout the years. I think it's a, you know, it's going to be a great place. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the, the, uh, the new move. And you go from one great cup winning head coach now to working with Scott Milanovic, another guy who's won a great cup as a head coach. How important is it to have you have a guy alongside of you like that? And to, especially a guy with the experience in the CFL that Scott has. Yeah, it's funny. Scott and I really didn't know each other until, the zoom meeting. Um, yeah. so it'll be fun to meet new people, right? The only place I've known really was Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I didn't know anybody in Winnipeg when I got there, when I, when I was at the Rams, I, I interviewed at Winnipeg and got the job. So it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fun thing to, to be able to, to meet new people and, um, share ideas and, and hopefully grow for, years to come you were part of some pretty successful groups in winnipeg it's been one of the most dominant franchises in the cfl for years why do you think you were able to have success with your group over that long span of time you spent in winnipeg um you know i think we we built a good culture all right and i think uh the players were willing to listen um watching the hamilton film and playing against them those guys seem to believe in special teams i think that's important um so it's it's nice to go someplace where special teams is really part one third of the game mm-hmm. right so uh yeah i'm looking forward to the opportunity i've i've just chatted with a couple guys here and there so far um i know free agency is rolling here so we'll see what happens as as things go by 
this fan base is very passionate, much like the one you came from in Winnipeg. But but what have you seen from this fan base on the road playing against them? And what excites you about now being able to join the Hamilton Ticats and, and be on that side in Tim Hortons field? Yeah. Um, so when we were in, when I was in Winnipeg, we struggled there all the time. Uh, and the fans made it uncomfortable. Um, and even the Grey Cup when we played there, the, which, I mean, it was – <laughs> it was just raucous. It was uh, it was an impressive um, deal to be around. So yeah, I'm looking forward to being in a uh, situation where the fans really enjoy coming to the games. You know, some that's not you can't say that about all the the places in the CFL. So um, I'm really looking forward to being in front of those those fans and and uh, hopefully doing some really good things in the East. You touched on Legio, a guy you know from your time in Winnipeg, but what's that relationship like with him? And and is it nice to have a kicker who who you're very familiar with to lead that kick team? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I talked to Legs after I got hired, and uh, we just, you know, touched base. And it was, it was hard for him in Winnipeg. Um, the plan was Medlock, who was in Hamilton, I had him and pretty sure Meddy was going to play one more year and we could kind of move legs into the role slowly. And then the pandemic hit. Yeah. And so Meddy decided to leave and legs was kind of pounced right into a, a tough spot. And, uh, but I got all the respect for legs and I, I, I think, uh, it's going to be fun working with him again. Um, you know, he understands who I am as a person. I understand him. Uh, so we're just going to, you know, go have fun. People are probably tired of me saying this on this show, but best name a kicker's ever had, I think, in the CFL, Legio. I, I, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. I tell him that every time. He's probably sick of me saying it, but I'm going to stick to it. Another player that's super exciting uh, that had his first year in the league on that special teams is Carthel Flowers Lloyd at one point looked like he was near or close to on pace to breaking the special teams tackles record. When you look at a guy like that, does that excite you having a guy you can work with and a young player who's already been as successful as he's been able to be? Yeah, obviously. I mean, you can't teach a nose for the ball. You either want it or you don't. Um, And he's a guy that he just always kind of can sniff out the football. there was guys like that. Mike Miller is one example who mm-hmm. now is coaching, um, but just finding a way to get through the mess and get into the football is a, a unique trait that not every guy that plays special teams has. Um, and it'll be fun, you know, working with, with guys that, uh, you know, you gotta have passion for it as well. So now for those fans, want to get to know you a little bit better off the field outside of football what are you doing what's what are you doing on the downtime with the family or whatever it may be golf golf okay are you are you hitting it well or are you just out there having maybe a beer and uh relaxing or are you, are you striking the ball out there i'm trying to play okay it's snow out here so i'm looking yeah. forward to getting east where there's less snow um, but I had a really nice course out here and i heard there's a lot of nice courses uh mm-hmm. out that way um, I usually try to play game day morning. I try to play 18 holes and okay. five weeks, get some, uh, get some rounds in. Uh, I know Bo Levi is a golfer and, yep. uh, there's a couple guys, uh, Whitey, the long snapper. He's already texted up. Apparently he <laughs> plays golf. So, uh, yeah, it- enjoy golf and I got a seven year old son. So it'll be, uh, we just got a house today. So nice. we're we, uh, moving out that way. Um, Got to get him into school, but he's he's already picked out his room. So we're excited for this uh, this new move. It's going to be an exciting time. And I'll tell you one thing. When it comes to golf, from what I've heard from the players talking, they're all so competitive. Everyone's talking about who's better than who. Taylor Powell and Bo Levi Mitchell are going at it. And who's a better golfer? So it's nice to see another golfer now getting into the mix. Maybe you can show them a thing or two. We'll see, Coach. But Looking ahead now in these next couple of months, what does it look like for you? How busy are you going to be? And, and what's, 
what's kind of your process going to be in the next couple months preparing for 2024? Yeah. So, uh, we just flew back from Hamilton uh, a couple days ago. I kind of put some stuff in my office, just got my, my, uh, new laptop. So I'm going to start doing, uh, just some PowerPoint stuff, working on that. And then, uh, I'm going to go back to Hamilton pretty soon here for a week and I'm going to start just working on the first two or three opponents. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, uh, our first game is I've done a lot of battles with Calgary. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Opponent. Um, so kind of have an idea there. I can't remember who our, our second, uh, team is right now off the top of my head, but, um, yeah, I'm just going to start building training camp, uh, which which will take quite a, quite a bit of time, uh, and uh, try to get that schedule set set aside, and then I'm going to just going to start reaching out to once free agency is over, maybe touching base with some players, just introducing myself, uh, and just kind of go from there. Well, it's going to be a busy time for you, Coach. I appreciate you joining me on today's show, and we're looking forward to seeing you come training camp in May. So thanks again, Special Teams Coordinator Paul Boudreau. All right, thank you. That was Paul Boudreau. Great to get to chat with him a little bit for the first time. He can join that now heated debate over who's the best golfer for this Ticats team. It's time, though, I throw to my next guest, newly named defensive line coach for the Ticats, Glenn Young. All right, my next guest is the defensive line coach for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Glenn Young. Coach, thanks for joining me on the show today, and congratulations on the new gig here in the Hammer. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's uh, very exciting. Uh, the, the, the funny story of it all is it's kind of come full circle. I was drafted by them as a junior at Syracuse in the third round, and when I came back, my mom and dad were in Toronto, so I got my rights traded. So <laughs> the funny story is it's kind of full circle and probably back where I probably should have began. You're finally getting your moment with the tie catch just a few years too late, I guess. Or actually not too late, but just in time. But, Coach, how does it feel now to be a member of this organization and to be working alongside a guy you know very well in Scott Milanovic? Uh, you know what? Uh, it's a classy organization. You know, you don't. a lot of people don't realize uh, that it's first class all the way around. Uh, starting at the top, you know, Orlando and I go way back. Uh, Scott and I know each other well. Uh, you know, some of the players there that, you know, I've coached against already. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's a sad thing to see they haven't won a cup in, in quite some time, right? It's kind of the same scenario when I was in Winnipeg. It's about 29 years since they mm -hmm. won one. So Hamilton's due. I think it's the right place to be. It's the right organization to be with. The people uh, that are running things, highly intelligent people, understand the game. Uh, all have the same goal, you know, so uh, it's going to be uh, very impactful to be in an environment like that. How did ki conversations kind of come about for you, Hugh, to jump on ship here? How did that all start? Uh, just uh, a couple simple conversations with Mark Washington, you know, and then uh, it kind of worked from there. And, it, uh, you know, things were moving in a good direction. And uh, I liked what I heard. Talked to Scott, talked to Mark, uh, a lot of great things. Uh, I Ironically, I was a linebacker my whole life. I've coached linebackers predominantly in the beginning of my coaching career, but then I've mm -hmm. evolved into a D-line coach, which the irony is almost funny to me. Uh, it's just I see things from the front back, you know, just yeah. because of uh, being a defensive coordinator. So yeah. I really enjoy starting things off there, getting things kind of established right from the beginning so that, uh, you know, when the game begins, people don't know they're going to be in for a dogfight. We're going to have a dogfight up front, and we're going to come out uh, victorious predominantly most of the time. I'm going to predict it because I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to get after uh, uh, those guys, get them better, and make sure that they understand the game the way they need to. How does it feel from being a, an Argo for a long time, a coach for the Argos, to now being a member of the Black and Gold? I kind of asked Coach Milanovic this the same, and, and he laughed a little bit. But how does it feel now to be joining the rival down the QEW? You know what? It's home now. So I don't look at it as being a rivalry. You know, that's yeah. just where home is going to be. Uh, my family's excited. Uh, I think it's going to be a good perspective from that point of view. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's really hard to see them as rivals when uh, you talk to Ed Hervey, you talk to you talk to O, you talk to Scott, you talk to Mark. Uh, it's 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 a really one of the better families I've been associated with in the coaching world. Uh, they're all good men, uh, good family guys. Uh, it's important everybody to have family around. 
And, you know, that's how you can grow a, uh, a really good environment with the players as well. And this is a city that prides itself on how good its defense is. is does that excite you to be playing in front of a fan base that prides themselves on their defense? A hundred percent. Uh, that's the place I want to be because I believe defenses win games. I believe yeah. defenses win championships. I believe defenses set tones. We can get off the ball fast in the beginning and knock an offense, uh, you know, uh, you know, off their game initially. We we're going to give our offense chances to score, and then they can do what they do, and we'll just keep shutting the team down. We're playing, and it's going to be exciting from both ends. People will see a lot of high scoring from us, and they're going to see us shut other people down, and that makes for. Uh, you know, that's an exciting football game. Coach, do you have any memories, whether it be as a player or as a coach, playing at Tim Hortons Field or Ivor Wynn back in the day? Or do you have any memories that stand out to you about being in Hamilton and playing in front of the fans here? Yeah. I, I, I Ironically, I remember being with the Argos and O'Shea getting booed all the time. That was, <laughs> that was always the funniest thing. They hated Mike. And it was just yeah. funny to be in an environment where he'd walk in, he could care less. And <laughs> everyone just absolutely hated him. And then he ended up going over there and I stayed in Toronto. Uh, you know, the, the, <clears> those are great stories because that's what makes the CFL what it is, right? The fans mm-hmm. are totally involved. They're in tune with what's going on. They know the players. They know who to hate, who to love. You know, and if you can get on their good side, then – uh, you become endeared to them, and it's not, there's nothing more fun to, to be winning games for people who really care about what they're watching. And that's definitely a place here. Everyone loves their football. I want to talk about a couple of the guys on this D-line, the first one being Casey Sales, a guy who came in last year and was so dominant for the Cats on that line. What do you think about him and his game? I'm looking forward to working with him. You know, I think my, my biggest uh, coaching philosophy is – it doesn't matter what got you where you're at. The reality is you still got to be able to learn and grow. And I think mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing what he really can achieve despite what he's already accomplished, right? I mean, that's how you look at guys. You got to look at situations where, yeah, they're good players, great players, they're dominant players, but they can actually be better than what they are. I mean, that's just been proven year in, year out. Uh, even in Winnipeg, when I got Willie from Saskatchewan, uh, Willie had a lot of room to grow, and you can kind of see what he's evolved into. You know, I yeah. know Casey came out of that that program just after I left, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, we can do with that clay because uh, he has a lot of potential, a huge upside. He's already starting to figure out who he is as a player in the CFL, and then just some fine tuning, tweaking, understanding things, maybe a little bit more in depth, uh, it's, and even some technical things that I can teach him that uh, maybe put some one step closer to making even better better plays. Yeah, and, and that would be a scary sight to see him even better. Another guy who just re-signed today, Canadian Mason Bennett. Uh, what do you see from him, and is it nice to see him now re-signed here with the Cats for next season? Yeah, a lot of tools. There's going to be a lot mm-hmm. of uh, a lot of fun up front, I believe. Uh, I we, we were looking at him when I was in Winnipeg, obviously when he was coming out of North Dakota. So he's a kid that uh, I know is starting to kind of keep his feelers going in a direction as learning about the CFL because it's a different game. It doesn't matter yeah. coming from the college ranks. It doesn't matter playing in the NFL. If it's a couple of seasons, it's a different animal. You have to adjust. You have to understand how uh, to get off the ball. You have to understand how to attack the offense and protections. Cause you know, college players don't really get a lot of teaching on protections. Mm-hmm. There's limited, uh, you know, practices, limited meetings. They have classes. Uh, you get to the pro level. Now you're going to learn some in-depth uh, analysis of uh, protections and run game and how to fit technical stuff that you probably weren't taught because of the limited time you've had in college. So I just look at him as a kid that is so much upside that I'm looking forward to seeing what we can truly get out of him as an athlete, right? Because everyone's a great athlete. Your, your athletic ability got you in the league ultimately, but how long can you sustain your career? It's going to be coming. It's going to come down to your technique. It's going to come down to understanding the game of football, how to attack things, how to beat a block when you see it in front of your face, you know, even if we call some kind of a pressure and then you get a different kind of blocking scheme we anticipate, there's still a way to beat that protection in your position to be able to be effective. So that's kind of the nuances of being a professional athlete. It's going deeper into understanding that you're not just an athlete. You're basically a guy that uh, is going to kind of coordinate your brain with your body. And once you do that, you can really be uh, one of those intimidating factors we need up front because that's what we need. Four guys that are yeah. very intimidating. You're going to be afraid to play us. Uh, We're going to move around. We're going to get after you. We're going to get off the ball. We're going to do some things that are going to keep offensive linemen on, you know, on on, on their heels, really, because if we can get them on their heels, they're they're going to be in trouble. They won't be able to pass things off. They're going to get bowled over. Uh, So it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking 
forward to getting to these guys and really starting to mold them into uh, something that they can really be proud of. Getting me excited just talking about it here, Coach. Now, off the field, for the fans, what do you like to do outside of the game of football for fans trying to get to know you? What's what's the hobbies for you, Coach? Oh, gosh. I got <laughs> uh, I got a few. I'm a big movie buff. My wife and okay. I, we like to go to the movies. They haven't come out with like really good movies lately. Like Lord of the Rings is like a huge movie for me. It's a classic. I'm into the, I'm into the Chosen right now. We're in season four. They just came out with the first three episodes. My yep. wife and I actually just saw it on our anniversary on Monday. And she didn't know, so I kind of surprised her with it. And she was thrilled when we did it, and it was really, really powerful. Yeah, uh, I love uh, aquariums and tropical fish. I'll probably have one in my office of some sort. <laughs> um, I love golf. The game of golf is something yep. that I passionately try to perfect. I mean, because I'm an OCD person. I Not love easy. to, like, figure things out. And that's one of the things that's been an enigma for quite some time in my life. But I'm actually, I'm actually getting to where, you know, I got game. So you got some game now, coach. I got some game. You need to teach me some stuff because I've been trying for 15 years and I still don't have game. That's the beautiful thing about golf for me. The older I get, the more I realize my brain really, it's good at deciphering and figuring out. So I've, I've worked with my daughter a little bit, helping her out, but uh, I have figured out some things and I love teaching what I know. So it's a really Mm -hmm. good combination. So anything you need to know, I I'm all, I'm available. Well, I might have to come to you for some golf tips, Coach. This next couple months are going to be busy, but what does it look like for you now and getting prepared for this season? Uh, just getting up to speed on the playbook, under, you know, making some uh, adjustments, changes, understanding Mark and his thought processes and his thinking and trying to mesh some ideas I have, uh, you know, and then trying to gel that with the players. Uh, eventually, we'll get that all together, and that's what's going to be the, the most fun of it all is really getting that paper live action out on the field and uh, tweaking things and seeing what works, what doesn't work, what you want to throw out that the experiment you worked on in the lab, you know, and then you say, <laughs> yeah. eh, maybe it's not as good as we think, uh, but maybe something happens. And a lot of things actually in practice happen accidentally that actually evolve into something that you run. A guy screws it up and you go, you know what? I actually like the way you screwed it up better than the way we drew it up. Um, mm-hmm. So those are the things that'll be going on. Just, Really getting to understand uh, Mark's mindset, you know, and um, his, him understanding me, where I'm coming from and what I've evolved and grown. And there's some innovative things that I've worked on, you know, especially in Winnipeg when I was the front seven guy. So I had to con- basically coach the D-line and linebackers at the same time, which is not the yeah, easiest yeah. thing to do. So there's some adaptations I had to do in my coaching, uh, teaching. Uh, I had to be able to incorporate everybody in individual. It's still the same 15 minute period. I didn't get half an hour because I was coaching two positions. So <laughs> yeah. the same 15 minutes that I had to figure out how to get everyone on the same page, doing the same things with the same understanding, same technical aspects of it from a two point, three point stance. So uh, there's some nuances there, but uh, it's going to be fun to work with the D line. It's, it's just, it still makes me laugh how I, I thoroughly enjoy the D-line. I really love working with those guys because they really are the guys that make the difference. If you can get those guys start to finish 60 full minutes of just getting after people, you really will see an exciting brand of football in the defense. Well, I'm sure Ticats fans are excited to see it. I know I'm excited to see it. So, Coach, I appreciate you joining me today. I'll probably be stopping by your office come summertime for a few tips on my swing because – It looks awful every summer. But once again, Coach Glenn Young, appreciate you joining me today, man. I appreciate it. It's uh, wonderful. I look forward to seeing you more and more.